I'm Steve for This Week with Cars, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love switching these ultra capacitors in for the batteries on my cars. Today I'm going to put this ultra capacitor in this Sunbeam Tiger so that I can start driving it and working out the bugs on it. I'm going to make a few changes from the typical installation I've been doing on these ultra capacitors, so I decided to make a video to show you what I had in mind. Now the only reason I've been using the excess power ultra capacitors is because well, they're the only ones that I know about. The Maxwell starting units work a little bit differently, and I've shown you before that I've made my own ultra capacitors using Maxwell cells before. But for an ultra capacitor that's a direct swap in a car, these are the only ones that I know about. Okay, so here's the normal location of the battery. I won't need this battery tray anymore. Since the battery terminals on this car were already shot, I went ahead and I crimped on some ring terminals on the ends of these cables. That way they can be bolted directly to the ultra capacitor. They do make uh, screw in terminals so that you can connect it to normal battery cables to make it an even more direct swap. But since the battery terminals were already in bad shape, I just went ahead and put on ring terminals. So here's the ultra capacitor. You can see it's very light. You can hold it with just a few fingers. It's gonna sit in about like that because this is my positive terminal, which will go right there. And I'll connect up the negative here. In the past on all my cars, I've been using the stock battery tie down to hold the ultra capacitors in. But on this car, I'm gonna try something a little different, mainly because if I put the bar that goes across here, which would tie in here, I might short across the two terminals here, which would be very, very bad with an ultra capacitor. It says right here that the max amperage of this Ultra capacitor is 15,500 amps. A uh, good normal battery is about 700. So you would instantly melt anything that you were to put across the terminals here. So as an alternative, I'm going to install a battery tie down made specifically for these. Here's the bottom of the tie down. Now what's nice about these is I don't have to worry about centering it in the battery, it can be offset to one side and it's still going to hold it just fine. So I can actually mount it here. There's a rib in the floor because the floor is not flat and I can mount it right here. I'll just have to drill a couple holes for a couple bolts to go through the floor to tie this down. So I'll just mark the holes with a pen. case using a 916 steep socket I was able to tighten them from below without having to hold anything up here. The steel bolt on the aluminum mounting bracket must have held good enough in order to hold the bolt and allowed me to tighten it up. I'll salt the capacitor in there. There is some movement side to side here right now. Don't worry about that. Once you get the top on it'll be held in nice and tight. Here's the top mounting bracket. There is some rubber on here. It's pretty thick and that squeezes down on the capacitor. Now I'll just tighten the top bracket down. The battery cables get held in place by these bolts that go through into the terminals here. Normally my installation of these would include a ring terminal to battery charger adapter so that I could put my battery tenders onto these and make sure that they're always charged up when I want to drive the car. And these are great because you can connect your battery charger to them. 
And you can also connect them to a solar panel. So if you're storing your car outside and you've switched over to an ultra capacitor, putting a solar panel on it to make sure that it's always charged up is a great idea. The solar panels actually work incredible when paired with ultra capacitors, and I'll cover that in another video. One problem that I'm running into that would be a little more specific to my setup is that as I'm installing a lot of ultra capacitors into my cars, I'm needing more and more battery tenders to keep them charged up. So this time I want to install one of these onboard battery chargers. And there's a couple reasons for choosing this model. And that's because this model will charge from a dead cold battery. So if this ultra capacitor was ever drained to zero voltage, this battery charger will still charge it up. It doesn't need to detect more than three volts like some chargers do in order to activate and start charging. So instead of needing another battery charger sitting around the shop, this one can be mounted in the car and I just need to run an extension cable over to the car whenever I wanna drive it. I don't even need to make sure that I've got it charged up. As long as I go and check it a half an hour beforehand, plug it into the wall, that will be plenty of time to charge the ultra capacitor up in order to drive it. And the generator on the car would very quickly charge it up the rest of the way if the battery charger didn't have enough time to top it off. Since the battery is in the trunk of this car, there's plenty of spots to mount this. And it's really easy to just open up the trunk and plug an extension cord into the charger. These chargers don't weigh very much, so I think I'm actually going to attach it to the panel that hides the saddlebag gas tank. Now I can attach the charger and the battery terminals to the car. This ultra capacitor does have some charge on it, but it was not setting on a charger. One of the great things about ultra capacitors is that they are very, very quick to charge. So I've got a stopwatch. I will start it when I plug it in and we'll see how much time it takes this 1.5 amp charger to charge up the ultra capacitor. When I plug this in, it'll be a second before this lights up and I'll start the timer when we see the light. Okay, it's charging. Let's set the timer right there. Okay, I went back and looked at the camera. It took 43 minutes to charge this up with a 1.5 amp charger. So you can imagine how a small solar panel like this that provides only 0.75 amps would actually make a lot of sense. This solar panel charges only half as much as this battery charger, but neither of them really charge very quickly. However, they work very well with an ultra capacitor like this. If you were driving your car regularly or you had a solar panel attached, your ultra capacitor would never be drained as much as this one was here. So you can imagine how an hour a day of solar charging on an ultra capacitor would keep it good all the time. So there's one last thing to do. Let's start the car up and make sure that this works. I almost forgot you can put the plastic caps back on that came on the capacitor when you got it. And it's a good idea to cover your positive terminal so that nothing hits it. I'm just going to put a good piece of Gorilla Tape over it. And now I'm ready for years of enjoyment with this car and never having to replace a battery. Well, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about supercapacitors, click subscribe because I've ordered some things from China that I'm going to experiment with soon. So I hope you like the video and I'll see you next time.